Are you desperately trying to justify the purchase of your dream level machine? A Harley Davidson, perhaps. But you're struggling to get over that final hurdle of actually putting your money down and taking the plunge. Well, today, I may have the answer for you. What if I were to tell you that you could buy two bikes for the price of one? Welcome. The 2018 onwards Harley Davidson Sport Glide. This is the 2023 model. Now with this bike, Harley Davidson claimed that it's equal parts performance, aggressive cruiser and continent crushing grand touring motorcycle. Their claim is that you can move seamlessly from the two from an aggressive, genuinely good handling motorbike to a bike that you'd happily tour Europe or do east coast to west coast of the US on. So what I'm going to do to start this review is put that point to the test. Because here we are now, fully set up in the continent crushing mode. I'm going to give myself exactly one minute and I need to remove the front fairing remove both panniers and also I need to set up the suspension taking into account the reduced weight. No fully laden panniers and nothing else strapped to the back. Bear with me while I go and get my phone. I'll set the timer for 60 seconds. Right, stopwatch set so I can't lie. Go, it begins. So first pannier coming off, open up the pannier there, flip it round, pull off. Next, exactly the same principle, open the pannier, flip it open, second off. Now the fairing, surely that can't be as easy as the two panniers, but yes, it is. Pannier off and finally, the last thing, suspension. Do I have to take the seat off? Absolutely not. Let me just quickly adjust the suspension. Good enough. Suspension adjusted, on the bike, ready to go, 42 seconds. Now we've got, excuse me, that out of the way, we can move on to the rest of the review. I was talking to an American rider a couple of days ago and he told me that this year, 2023, is the last year of the sport ride. It's apparently going to be discontinued. So. Very possibly, and I assume it will be the same in Europe as well, this is now the last year you'll be able to go to a Harley Davidson dealer and actually buy one of these bikes. I know I demonstrated there how quickly you can change it from Torah to strip back cruiser, but it's more than that. This bike has to look just as good as a stripped back cruiser as it does a long distance Torah. And I'll demonstrate how well Harley have achieved this by showing you the front and back. Have a look at this. The headlamp, floating headlamp, black on the back with a beautiful chrome surround. Take a look closer. There's nothing here to give away that the front of this bike houses a fairing. There are no ugly clips, naked attachments that give anything away. It's a work of art what they've done to the front. And if we come round to the side, either way's fine. Single-sided exhaust. These two clips here are the only things that give away the fact that a hard pannier can be on the back of the bike. It's elegance, it's class. It's just as at home here, stripped back as a naked bike, as it is a long distance tourer. A few people have said to me, incredibly, even in 2023, they've said, Freddie, Harley Davidson's rust buckets or well, not where I'm standing, or not from where I'm standing, not for the past 20 years or so. The build quality, the fit and finish of Harley Davidson's is not just first class, it's top of the class everywhere. Have a look here, for example. The chrome finish on the bottom of the engine. Even the chrome here, it's the most beautiful quality, and the accents here. Chrome accents on the engine, the fins, and right up at the top here of the engine. Even that, Harley-Davidson won't miss that out 
or overlook it, that is chrome. The quality of the paint, of course, first class. The position of the mirrors here, so beautifully designed. And the indicators tucked neatly here under the handlebars. They've thought of everything. There's nothing I'd change on this bike at all. It comes straight out of the box, ready to go. I'll show you one other thing as well. If you come around to the side, that's where you adjust the suspension. Again, it's easy, it's ready, it's to hand. Everything is simple on this bike. I am completely certain I've never ridden or seen a bike that makes life so easy for the rider. The fact that you can take everything off so easily, adjust things, it's on another level to anything I've ever seen with regards to usability and ease of living. Right, before I go off into too much of a monologue, we'll put the panniers back on because I've got a few bits and pieces I need to take with me, get kitted up and into the Cornish countryside. I remember on Sportsters of old, up until the new generation, you could be forgiven for thinking, well, it's got the name Sportster in it, so it must have at least some sporting credentials. But no, they were lead weights with barely enough power to drag themselves along the road, and they were the opposite of dynamic. But here in 2023, when Harley Davidson put sport in the name of a bike, they really mean it. This bike has a dynamism, a lightness of handling, and a genuine ability to make you want to attack the bends that has completely blown me away. This bike really, really genuinely hand on heart handles. I know, I know at 317 kilos you may not believe me, but trust me on this. This, this is a rider's bike. Coupled with that, the important stuff, the Harley-ishness that any prospective buyer will demand. They still want to know they're buying a Harley Davidson. Well, I'm delighted to say it's got all of that because Harley Davidson, above all else, they deal with an experience. When they sell you a bike, they sell you an experience. Every ride, you have to feel something deep down with a Harley. You have to know you're on a Harley. I twist the throttle on the motorway, for example, and it's a gorilla beating its chest. I twist a little more and it roars hand off the accelerator, get to a traffic light, and it's a deep throbbing burble from deep, deep down in the engine to let you know that you're on a Harley. The engine is a complete joy, characterful everywhere. This bike is just as fun at 20 miles an hour, I promise you, as it is bashing out the motorways at 85 miles an hour for hour after hour after hour. And the simple thing for me is this, Yes, I've got all of the character I could ever dream for on a Harley Davidson, but if we're looking at, looking at it purely from a riding point of view, does this bike make me want to attack the bends and does it deserve the name Sport? Well, yes, and my Lord, yes. <laughs>
tight lanes of Cornwall. You may think that because this is 317 kilos, maneuvering a bike like the Harley Davidson in Cornwall with all of these little lanes is a nightmare. But watch this. First of all, look at the position of my legs. I've got good leverage to move the bike about. And because of the low weight, this is infinitely less intimidating than you may think. Also, when I head off in the opposite direction, have a look at how slim a profile that is, even with both panniers on, because filtering through traffic with a relatively slim profile like this, almost as easy as my Bonneville. I'll now demonstrate. Have a look at the ease of manoeuvring. Even pushing it on a slight incline, back and forth, I could do it all day. And a good turning circle as well. And watch this rear profile. Two more things to mention before I forget. Single disc on the front. I've done 600 miles on this bike and I feel absolutely no need to have any more than a single disc. I know some people say they must have two discs on the front of a bike, but I can't see any situations where I need any more stopping power than that. Look, of course you could have more stopping power, you always can, but that's perfect for the kind of bike that it is. It fits it extremely well. With regards to power as well, 82 horsepower from such a massive bike, again, you could think, it's just not enough power, but I promise you, this bike pulls like Schwarzenegger in his steroid-fueled prime. Deep, deep down strength, whenever you need it. I'll just listen to the exhaust. It's actually as Harleys go, fairly subtle, but for me it's just right. You can feel that character there, but it's not so obtrusive that the neighbours want to come and slap you in the face. Just a lovely deep down growl. There will always be the argument, are Harley Davidson's overpriced? But there's a difference between expensive and overpriced. This Harley Davidson is over 1,600 pounds cheaper than the equivalent BMW R18 Classic. That's the big one with the leather panniers and Perspex screen. And in the days when Multistrada's Ducatis can be 20 to over 30,000 pounds and Honda Gold Rings are 25,000 pounds, I don't think 17,895 pounds is too much at all. And you could say, yes, but Freddie, the Multistrada's, the Gold Rings, you've got active suspension, you've got electronic this and that, you've got different rider modes, you've got DCT suspension. Well, that's all lovely but do I really want it? At least with a Harley Davidson here, and we're all different with bikes, all different in what we want and what we look for, but with this Harley Davidson, I can see where every single penny has been spent. It's all spent on the quality right here in front of my face. And in a few years time, when everything's electric and all this is gone, the internal combustion engine, well, I can tell you right now, we'll be looking back, dancing and celebrating that bikes like this, like these Harley Davidsons, are still here representing the very best of stripped back, raw, mechanical engineering brilliance.
I've removed the pannier. So I can wrap up this review video to show in clear sight the elegance of this side profile. I think it's as elegant and as timeless a Harley side profile as there's ever been. It's just the most beautiful silhouette. This bike probably goes under the radar when you compare it to a lot of other Harleys in the lineup. But I find myself looking at the entire Harley lineup, looking at the versatility of this bike and the competitiveness of the, the package in total and thinking to myself, if I'm looking level-headedly, there really is nothing that matches this as a whole. And in a sea of excess, which is where we are at this end of the market, you could argue that this is the thinking man or woman's bike. It really does make a huge amount of sense. Harley-Davidson have achieved their goal in my mind, completely knocked it out of the park by combining a genuinely sporty ride with long distance capabilities and giving the bike an elegance that's rarely seen in a long distance machine. This is a seriously, seriously accomplished bike and it makes a lot more sense here in the UK than you may well ever have given it credit for.